It being 6.34, I'll call the monthly meeting of the GFW School Board to order. Uh, the first uh, item on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Is there any additions or corrections? Hearing none, is uh, there a I'd like to make a motion to remove items number six, Roman numeral seven, one and two from the agenda. I feel the board needs more discussion to have for those items. One contract we just got. You're talking to two contracts? Yep, the ended, to the two independent contracts. I'd like to make a motion to remove those from the agenda. Motions made to remove item six or heading six, item seven. Is there a second? Um, I'll second that. Motions made and seconded to um, pull those that from the consent agenda. Uh, is there any discussion? All in favor of the motion, raise your hand. Opposed, same sign. Motion fails on a 3 3 vote. Is there a motion to approve the agenda then? I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Is there a second? I'll second is motions made and seconded to approve the agenda as printed. All in favor, raise your hand. Opposed, same sign. Motion fails in a 3-3 vote. So we do not have an agenda. Um, no. What's our next step? Well, um, there was two things listed on the consent agenda to remove that were um, listed as together. If those are separate issues, then those could be amended as separate issues. Um, otherwise, we don't have an agenda and the meeting is over. Okay. And uh, that would also mean that we don't, um, we also have bills and things like that we need to pay. So we would need to schedule another meeting probably in the next few days to, to go about that. Okay, what would everyone like to do? Can you just move them as discussion items so we can talk about, we just got the CFO contract, so it was way too short notice for me to review it. I was at work. Sure. So I'm frustrated with that. So if we want to remove that item, you could make a motion to remove item, remove the CFO contract, yes, as a separate item. That was something that you could do. Um, there was two items listed and if that's the one item that you're interested in removing, you can do that. That would be a different amendment than what was uh, suggested earlier. I think both items should be discussionable items. And I'll make a motion to amend the both the two independent contracts get removed to discussion items. We've already voted on that, though, and it failed. No, we just moved to just to, to remove them completely. From oh, okay. So you want to move, take them from the consent agenda and move them to a discussion item yeah. is that your motion yeah yeah because then we can yes is there a second i'll second it motions made and seconded to take item six seven sub one and sub two moving from the consent agenda to discussion rather than action items any discussion I would like to clarify too that, and I know we've brought this up before, but um, while we do want to have discussions about contracts, we do have committees that work on that and we don't negotiate contracts at the board table. So I would caution the board about um, data privacy and things like that um, and be very thoughtful about any conversations that are had and how those would uh, be impacted. Not that I'm trying to limit conversation, just thoughtful about how and what is said and, and in the manner in which it's done in respect to our um, both uh, privacy laws and also to um, um, our policies and procedures and past practices. Okay. 
Uh, one of the items has gone through our processes and procedures and, and whatnot. I would say that the other one, um, to member Lee's point, um, maybe does need to go back and be reviewed in that process, and that could definitely be done. Uh, but those are two different those are two different contracts with two different topics. So, and that's where I offered the opportunity to maybe treat them as separate or do action make suggestions maybe on one versus the other. Um, Again, you are the board. You can decide how to do that. I just want to provide caution to make sure we don't um, make a misstep, as Ms. Elmer suggested. Well, our committee policy also states that the school board will receive reports or recommendations from a committee or subcommittee for consideration. So, and to my knowledge, we haven't gotten any reports or anything like that or had discussion or time to do that. That's why I'd like them to remove until we have that time. You're talking about the CFO on both of them. We've had the other contract for two months. I'm sending your report back several times. I understand, but I've asked, we've asked for some discussion on it. And whether it has to be a closed session again or whatever it is, then. At the last special meeting, I asked if we could have a closed meeting to discuss it. Yeah, but that doesn't mean And just a point of clarification, we cannot have a closed session for that purpose. You can have a committee meeting, which is why we have a committee meeting to address that, but we can't have a closed session regarding that topic. I think, motion. Hang, hang on, Julie. I don't know if we can. Can we make the same motion again? I suppose we can. Oh, I, this, that's a different motion. Okay, I got it. Yep, I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying. Okay, thank you. Um, and to move it to next month so that the board members can discuss it further with Dr. Horton. Is there a second? Motions made and seconded to remove item six, seven, sub two, the CFO contract and table it for another month. Yes, we have an agenda. First item on the agenda tonight is school and community recognition. We have a wonderful backer from GFW and their scholarship program, and we'd certainly like to turn it over to Dr. Horton and let him tell his story. Absolutely. Uh, members of the board, if you could join uh, Mr. Weinsell up front. Um, and I think Mr. Uh, Cherkin, you have the- Yes. Um, Mr. Horton, would you like to use from my microphone, or would you like me to use your microphone? Okay. You want to do it that way? Yes. Doing good. All right. Got home early from college. It's classic. Here next to you, but other than that, doing well. How's that draft? All right, Dr. Hart. Can you hear me okay? Sounds good. All right. No? 
members of the board, today we are here to honor Jim Wenzel. Um, it is my pleasure to um, recommend him and have him receive the Spoon King Recognition Award. In his time here working with GFW, he has donated over $500,000 to our students. Um, and he's reached over his with the fellowship fund over 100 different students. He has set up a fund that will give over $50,000 a year to GFW students moving forward. Um, he's donated to local churches, fire departments. He's raised funds for the depot. He has a baseball museum in town. And I think that's a nice segue into uh, what, we, what we did this last week. Uh, uh, Mr. Weinstella had some unfortunate events happen where he had some, um, some of his uh, museum memorabilia stolen from his car. Uh, a very sad story. Uh, they, his, his car was actually stolen in the process, driven across the cities and ended up in a high-speed chase and crashed on the other side with none of the artifacts around. Um, we call, when we heard about this, we were, we were very saddened by that. Someone who gives so much to our community. And so we thought, you know, how can we pick somebody up that always picks us up? Uh, we reached out to the Minnesota Twins organization and they wanted to get involved as well. So we took a trip up, up to the uh, party field this last week. Uh, Mr. Weinstel did not know we were going there until we walked in. Um, where there were members of um, our community there from our different cities, uh, board member, myself, uh, Mr. Warner had to come because he's such an avid baseball fan. We couldn't leave him out of the mix. Um, uh, we presented him with a, a ball signed from each of the cities and the city administrators with a G and F and a W on each of the three balls. Uh, those are painted by our art teacher. Um, our students uh, signed a baseball bat, both the baseball team and the softball team gave them that. And the twins donated a lot of uh, different pieces as well. And we got to meet with uh, Clyde Deppner, who's the curator for the Minnesota Twins. He gave a private tour, and I think you two, uh, you may be instant best friends. <laughs> um, and so they made a deal that uh, they're going to go to a game together. I think he's going to sit in the press box with all the, with all the big dogs, and uh, they're going to take turns talking. So if each half inning, they're going to rotate because each of them has a lot of things to share. So one gets to the top of the inning, one gets to the bottom. Um, it was a very nice day. Um, it, it was a fun event. And uh, thank you for always picking us up, and we hope that we are able to you back up a little. Thank you so much. It was one of the best days of my life. It was just incredible and very thoughtful, you know, and, and meaningful uh, things for me. I mean, I, <laughs> so I took, a, I had my wife take a picture of me. Um, Wade gave me a given Reds jersey <laughs> and they gave me a Quinn's cap or a beanie. So I had a Take a picture of me in bed with wearing the jersey and the GFW balls in front of me. <laughs> and uh, it's pretty cool. So I can't thank you enough. And I, I want to thank you for this recognition. I appreciate it very much. I'm 80 years old and uh, um, I love GFW, always have, and uh, try to do good work. It's amazing when I came here today, all the little kids, what I thought of was your responsibility as board members to those little kids and, and the time that you volunteer and give your best efforts for those little kids out there. So I just want to thank you very much for all that you do as well. So thank you a lot. Congratulations for everything that you've done for GFW. Very nice, very meaningful. Thank you. You ready? You take the tears out of my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it does some good stuff with that camera. All right. <laughs> Thanks for everything you do, Jim. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Don't I do some pictures for you. I need to ask for some of your For me. I really appreciate this. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next item on the agenda is visitor recognition and public comments. Um, we have the press, we have staff. Understand we have a parent that would like to address the board. Please come forward, state your name, and you have two minutes. Okay. I <laughs> 
right here, okay? Yes. Okay, so I am Rebecca Lagoa, and I am here as a parent tonight. Um, just to inform you of a problem that I have become aware of, I want it to be addressed, and I want you to know how I feel about it, and I probably won't go through the whole list here, but um, one time ago, four or five years ago, my mother was diagnosed with convergence insufficiency. And um, her eyes don't work together, and it also affects processing in the brain. And um, I want you guys all to imagine yourself as a parent of a child that's just been labeled as having a disability. Okay, it's under the state of Minnesota, it's labeled as a disability. Um, with the diagnosis, GFW did their own testing. They qualified for an IMP, which is an individualized education program. You don't know what it is until you need one. Um, so an IE plan is developed by the district for children with disabilities that under law receive specialized instruction and services. This document is signed by district officials, teachers, SPED, and myself. It has been explained to me as I'm signing this that it is like a legal document. One minute. Okay. <laughs> and it's saying that the school is going to provide these services. Well, it has come to my attention that Faith is not receiving all of her services. Her accommodations have not all been met, but she does not have a helper in one of her classes. And in many discussions with school officials, um, it was kind of said that there was no paras in social studies and some science classes. And I went, well, what about the other kids? They're not getting any either. I got up. And I'm disturbed. So not only is my daughter not receiving all of her services, but there's she can't be the only child in eight grades that does have help in all her core classes. Now, this is a big thing. If you guys simply have to provide the parents and the co-teachers for all of the kids that states in the IEP. Now, I'm very happy with most of the work that time. Sorry. Not a problem. <laughs> I just wanted you guys to be aware. Very good, thank you. Um, next item, superintendent's report. All right, thank you, Chair Keen. Um, uh, part of my report was going to be about uh, Mr. Weinsettle and the day we spent up at uh, Target Field. So that was, uh, we did get to cover some of that, but it really was a, a pretty cool event. Um, it was very exciting. And uh, it was just, I want to big thanks to the Twins organization. They really did a lot of nice things to try to try to be a part of that. And that was really great of them to do that. Um, we did have a world's best workforce meeting earlier today. So uh, world's best workforce is the state plan. Um, it's similar to the Every Student Succeeds Act, except it's, uh, it was derived at the state level prior to the Every Student Succeeds Act. And it measures uh, different areas of uh, student achievement, career and college readiness. So we had that meeting today. Um, we also uh, received uh, uh, we're receiving up to $80,000 in funding for our career and technical education programming. Uh, our students are absolutely loving these programs. Our teachers are doing an amazing job. We're really excited about um, we're really excited about where that's going. And we're getting uh, when we do write grants, um, people do state back like how pumped up they are about the things that we're doing. So we want to keep that going. This will continue to help fund the different things that we're doing and to support our students. So very excited about that. Um, also, just wanted to update you. We are continuing to update our crisis plan. Um, we are currently working with a uh, person who actually is, she's one of the head people that has done some crisis planning down the southern part of the the, um, the U.S. Uh, she's been very involved in Texas lately, especially with some of the events that happened and making sure our plan is um, meeting all of the proper processes and procedures. So um, we're working on that and we're making good steps on that. And I think we're going to have some resources that are these binders are like three inches thick, and we're going to have something that's tailored down much nicer, I believe, to um, something that a staff member can pick up on a one pager and say, here's what I need to do. Here's what I go to do. Um, they don't necessarily need to know what's in the three page binder. I need to know that. Our administrators need to know that. But anything we can do to simplify that, but make sure our students are safe. Um, we do have some next steps. We'll be reaching out to the emergency responders, police, step, police force, when we get this document ready to make sure they review it, have input on it, and that we're all working together if we do end up in a crisis situation. So we're working hard on that. Um, legislative planning. Um, the legislature changed a little bit this year. Um, and so there is a lot of 
a lot of new people that will be coming into the legislature this year. Um, we have a sense of maybe where they're going. We continue to develop um, legislative platforms and working with across associations, MSBA, MASA, Education Minnesota, MREA, and others to have a um, unified voice on how to support students in education. So within that, I am there advocating for GFW and their needs to try to get those on the platforms, not just for ourselves, but uh, for other districts. So we're looking for common ways that we can work together. Um, legislative policy and legislative finance dictates a lot of what happens in schools. And so it's important that we continue to work with the legislature, develop relationships, and get good policy and um, get the funding our kids deserve and our community needs. Um, I also want to um, invite Mr. Werner to show a video um, to highlight some of our CT programming um, in our culinary class. Um, Ms. Camelander does a wonderful job of putting on a Thanksgiving meal. And so he has a video that we that just came hot off the, I don't know if you say hot off the press in the video world, but uh, is was freshly done today. And so we wanna share that with our community today with Thanksgiving coming up and with the board. So this will be the, the uh, first release of that and we'll be pushing that out on social media soon too. So Mr. Werner, can you, uh, can you queue up our video? Yeah. The table is set and the fireplace is rolling. Mrs. Camerlander's Culinary One class is hard at work whipping up an amazing holiday meal at the staff at GFW High School. The event we just, uh, we just did um, was we made a Thanksgiving meal for a bunch of the staff members. Um, we made turkey, of course, and mashed potatoes and gravy, a uh, stuffing, and we made corn and bread and butter. And pumpkin pie. I helped make the cranberry sauce. It's getting together. I gutted the turkey. I helped out the setting table. I got the water ready. The academies at KFW are all about letting students explore different career paths and learn important life skills. The culinary pathway is one of many to teach us important skills, all while making fun memories with their friends. When I look back on this event, I remember, I'll remember like cooking with Tori and my other kitchen group. I have a lot of students who do cook at home. Um, some, uh, you know, they claim that they can make great, um, elegant meals. Some um, actually do all the cooking for their family. I would like them to take away some of the skills that they learn. I would like them to take away that planning, that it takes um, planning not only the meal, but also the planning process for. Um, getting everything to come out on time. That is the, one of the biggest, the meal preparation, the meal timing is huge. Um, and that's something that's a learned skill. Hands-on learning, a strong community, and career and college readiness stand tall at GFW Public Schools. We are thankful for our students and honored 
grow future world class leaders. Oh, great for the audio. The audio quality, if you watch it, I'm going to mute the TV there, but if you watch it online on YouTube, the audio will be a lot better. <laughs> Yeah, thank you guys. I'm gonna stop sharing. Um, yeah. So uh, the last thing I think, thank you, Mr. Warner, for doing that. Um, that was a new experience in stereo. <laughs> um, so that is where we are with that. Um. The last thing I want to update everybody is that um, we have completed a facilities assessment that we've been working on for quite some time. I'd like to make sure that we update the board on that. And um, so um, I would like to bring that to our next work session. Um, if the board did want to consider any next steps, we could make that a special meeting to consider next steps if the board so chooses to do anything. But I think it's important to uh, do that. And I would suggest doing that maybe on our regular work session date where people are already have that date scheduled and available. So I um, just want to make sure that works for everybody. And um, that would be December 5th. That's our regular scheduled work session. So um, if we did want to make that a special meeting instead, we if there was anything the board wanted to do at that time, we could. We could do that. Does anybody have a preference, just regular work session or a special board meeting? Work session. Work session All right, let's leave it as a work session. <clears throat> okay. Um, that is the end of my superintendent. Uh, oh, the last thing is uh, just a new policy. Uh, I wanted to make sure that there was their um, school board policy 212. It matches up with uh, the statutory requirement a little bit. Um, we've been working with some frameworks, so there's some language changes um, on that. Uh, in essence, what this does is it provides um, ongoing support for our school board members. Um, we've had, well, I've had 12 school board members in my first two and a half years. Um, and there's, uh, that's a lot. <laughs> so in order to support our school board members to onboard, be successful, this just clears, lays out a little bit more, uh, some training and supports for them to help them onboard, understand uh, how to be successful board members. And then um, also it clarifies a little bit around governance and, and allows for that. So um, the board has, the board can choose what type of model governance they want. Um, we have had a model that we've looked at and utilized in the past. And it's in uh, a lot of the different pieces of literature we have in handbooks. So, um, and that's the MSBA framework. So there's that simple, um, Teamworks has some little bit different stuff, but if the board ever didn't wanna make a change with that, that's okay, but this would match up with the training and stuff. So it would just support new board members um, and how they do that and provide more clarity around uh, roles and responsibilities so everybody can, can do their best to help our students, so. So that's the, some of the changes in the policy. So I have that, it's just a first reading tonight. Um, that could be a future agenda topic. It's in your board packet, we'll vote on it then next month. Um, principal reports, do you wanna give them in person or just what you've got in the packet? Whatever you want. Yes, like. whatever. Let's do it in person as long as you're here. <laughs> Our students. We also want to thank the Winter Bonner Guard and Gibbon Lions for providing a meal to our GFW families prior to the event. Also, um, just two weeks ago, we were able to raise $800 with our Papa Murphy's fundraiser, and that's going to help support our T Bird Way events and the things that we're doing through the T Bird Way. Um, students are in Fayette are currently learning about brain health um, and heart health. And they're meeting kids with special hearts as they are raising money for the American Heart Association. 
Uh, Renville Sibley Cooperative Power Association presented to our fourth graders. Um, the presentation demonstrated where electricity comes from, ways to conserve electricity and respect for and safety around electricity. Our students are currently practicing for their winter concert, which will take place on Thursday, December 8th at 1.30 and 6.30, not 2 and 6.30 as I have in the board notes. So it'll be 1.30 and 6.30. Um, also our T-Bird Community Arts has a winter cantata that will take place on Saturday, December 3rd at 7 p.m. at St. Andrew's Catholic Church and Sunday, December 4th at 4 p.m. at Peace Lutheran. Um, the TCA board is also pleased to announce that next summer's musical will be Beauty and the Beast. Ooh, yeah. Very good, thank you, Jennifer. Anyone have any questions or comments for Jennifer? <laughs> if not, Brittany, you wanna do the high school, middle school? Yes, um, unfortunately my computer is not updated. <laughs> <Don't tell me. laughs> um, our high school, middle school, and high school students just got done with the play performance, the theater performance of Alice in Wonderland. They've been working really hard on that. So students got to preview the play last week on Thursday, and then they had the performances on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. They were wonderful. Um, tomorrow night, we have our band concerts. So we have that coming up for people to be a part of. And then once that's over, then we'll be able to get back into the auditorium for our recess times. And I know students are very anxious for that. Um, the Thunderbird um, manufacturing is taking your Christmas orders, your holiday orders for any um, engravings or ornaments that you would want. So make sure that you are um, sort of turning in those orders to their email address, Thunderbird Manufacturing at GFW Schools. Um, other than that, we are working really hard with um, all of our curriculum review and standards re review process. Um, our staff um, in the middle school is doing our EIR grant. So Mr. Tandy and Mr. Um, Framin and Ms. Wood are going to be leading our staff in our early release on Wednesday for um, EIR grant training. And then we have our next day in Olivia on the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. Um, we have our winter extravaganza on December 15th coming up. Um, and then we are just plugging away. Lots of great things happening. All right, very good, thank you. Any questions or comments for Brittany? Dasher reports in your package. Um, we don't have a school board rep or a, uh, I'm trying to student council rep. Um, any other reports from any committees that need to be commented on tonight? Just have a side note. I was able to stop in at uh, Renville County to, we had spoke at uh, one of the court sessions about cyberbullying. And I had talked to the Sheriff's Department and they were gonna look into finding someone who could come out and do seminars for all the area schools and stuff. So. They're working on it. They haven't contacted me back, but I told them we'd like something like that. So just so everyone knows. Very good. Um, athletics and activities, basketball teams are both practicing. Um, anything else going on? Play is over. Uh, yep, yep, and we're just gearing up for the uh, winter season now. It's just starting to get kicked off. All right, very good. Next item on is, is the consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? With removing six, subsection seven, number two. Is there a second? I'll second. Motion's made and seconded to approve the consent agenda as amended. All in favor, raise your hand. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries 4-2. Um, next up, uh, resolution and action item, school calendar for 2023-2024. It's in your packet. We discussed it at last board meeting or last work session? Last work session. Last work session. Yes. Um, 
Yep. So uh, I believe this contract reflects, or excuse me, the um, calendar reflects what um, the board would like. We didn't. We created this with input from our uh, union leaders, our our district reps, um, feedback from our principals, um, and feedback from the board. So um, it's a very similar calendar to what we have this year. Um, and I think uh, you know, point of conversation was that we're just we're, for this year with all the implementation of new stand of the review of the standards, the curriculum that. This will um, allow our staff to manage that workload and do the things that they need to do to help our kids. So there's a lot of new things you're getting. Um, it takes time to get that curriculum piece in there and to review that um, to make sure that's doing what it needs to do. So our staff are working extremely hard right now, um, and I think this is a I, I, this is our recommendation for uh, something that will be supportive of the work they need to do to help our students. Um, and I do know that there was some conversation about you know the amount of days and stuff, and I think that's definitely something that we can. After we get through this phase, we could revisit and say, "Hey, do we want to do we want to make an adjustment back, or are we okay with this?" So, um, yeah, I, am, I am getting more feedback from people concerned with the days. So, it's, I mean, student learning days, and if, if our scores continue to go down, then I'm afraid they'll be even more concerned. So, um, something that we have to watch. Is there enough? We have some extra built in. Yes. <laughs> I will tell you that snow days are maybe the least fun day for superintendents in the world. <laughs> we we don't get to win on those days. But yes, there are there is some extra built in there. So we have some we have some we got some room to work with. And this is the same calendar we went through at our work session. There was no modifications in the meantime. Right? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, Julie found a a place where I'd like left off like on the left hand column. Like I needed to say like day off. Like it was marked on the calendar as day off, but it didn't spelled out. So we we added that I think like in. Uh, I can't remember which month it was, but there was a month. It didn't change the calendar. It just was a, a labeling addition. So there's, so if you were to look at the two, you'd see some additional information, just further spelling out what that was. So no, it was a, it was a no school day, I think. So yeah. Was... Any further discussion? If, if not, not, I'll move the 2023-24 preliminary school calendar, or is this the final school calendar? This would be the final. This would be it. The final 2023-2024 school calendar as presented in your packet. Is there a second? I'll second. Motions made and seconded to approve as printed. Any further discussion? If not, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor, raise your hand. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Um, registration guide. We also talked about that at the last work session fairly extensively. Dr. Horton, you want to give us high points? Uh, like Principal Gleck, I thank you very much for all the work you've done on this. Um, we talked a little bit about this at the work session, but there's a lot of things that go into a, a registration guide. It's not just there's a lot of pieces that line up, for example, um, for our career and technical education classes and, and adding all those different courses we added. We need to make sure that that language matches with the state pro proper program codes so we get the funding and all these different pieces. So there's a lot of language pieces working with the syllabi with staff. Um, there's a lot of different pieces that go into that. So um, thank you for all of your work on that and working with staff, working with the state, working with me on that. Um, really appreciate it and uh just to, just so people to know we will have a new set of courses um so when you're looking at the registration guide um if this is a b year so anything that is a b this would be new courses so this would be the first time so we'll have new courses added this next year that um we identified and they were in last year's registration guide they just weren't running that year and our a courses that are here this year will come back the following year so it'll be an a b a b and our career and college readiness class in eighth grade will help students identify those classes and how they rotate so they can try to get into those classes and we can 
make sure that we get as many students in there as possible um, and get them their pieces. So um, in getting this registration guide out now, and that's what we'd like to do is this October, November timeframe, we want to get these approved now that we've kind of got all our ads in. Um, this will bump back our registration time. So we get that information from students sooner, students sooner then we can have, um, we can make sure we're working on the master scheduling that trickles down to student schedules. And I think with our new calendar, we've talked about how we're going to roll the things out to support families, support staff, support students um, for this year. So um, I think this got this uh, registration guide uh, represents that along with our calendar. So in principle, Glecka, thank you again. It's a, it's a big task and you've been working very hard for the last year or more on this. So it's got to feel kind of good to have it have it where it's at right now. So, um, so, and I'm gonna, I know I've said it before, I'm going to say again, we've gone from a registration guide that was 27 pages long to almost 90 pages long. So the depth of work and courses that we're adding now are, you know, that's a lot. <laughs> that's. And I like the idea that we're getting it done early, that we can get registration done. You can work on the schedules that the students get them in their hand before the day of conferences. I mean, so if we get them out two, three weeks ahead of time. It just makes everybody's workload a little, because there's always going to be changes, but at least spread it out that it all doesn't have to be done in a day and a half and everybody panics because they haven't got their schedule yet. So thank you. registration guide as presented in our packet. I'll make a motion to approve the registration guide. Is there a second? Okay, now I'm unmuted. Uh, motion's made to approve the registration guide for 2023-2024. Any further discussion? If not, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor, raise your hand. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is resolution for acceptance of donations. Uh, we've got a fairly extensive list this week or this month. Um, whereas acceptance of the donations in accordance with the donor's terms is in the best interest of GFW schools. Therefore, be it resolved that GFW schools accept the below described donations from said organizations or individuals in accordance with the terms set forth. Be it further resolved that GFW wishes to extend a grateful appreciation to these various individuals and organizations. We have $200 for the St. Willibord Catholic United Financial and Winthrop Honor Guard for a fentanyl presentation at the high school. We have $100 for the Fairfax Lions Club for the same fentanyl presentation. We have $250 donation from the Gibbon Fire Department for the fentanyl presentation. We have $100 from the Winthrop Lions Club for the fentanyl presentation and $250 from the Knights of Columbus and Gaylord for the fentanyl presentation. Is there a motion to accept the above donations? I'll make a motion to accept the donations. Is there a second? I'll second. Motion is made and seconded to accept the donations. Julie, would you call the roll? Lee? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Haas? Yes. Merkel? Yes. Keen? Yes. Krocknick? Yes. Thank you. Uh, the only other thing on the is going into executive closed session for the purpose of discussing litigation. Uh, is there anything else that needs to come before the board tonight? If not, I'll move that we recess the meeting to open a closed session. Is there a second? Motion's made and second to recess the meeting and go into closed session. All in favor, raise your hand. Opposed, same sign, motion carries. Do we want to do it here or somewhere else or? Cabinet members are free. We can all go, we can all go home. So uh, we can do it in here if uh, you guys want to step outside. We'll, uh, we'll let you know if we're, if we're ready to come back here and 